How's it going, Blade Sword? Working to bring you specifications you can relate to, so you can have an educated decision on your purchases. Let me know your thoughts on the knife as well, and let's get into this one. Now, thank you to CRKT Columbia River Knife and Tool for providing this knife here, and then also some news: uh, the Rip Snort is available in D2, $79.99, exclusive to CRKT.com. So now that's one thing that they're doing is bringing out uh, some of these other ones as folks requested in some better steels other than 8CR13. Uh, so check it out, support it, so they will continue to bring it out. It's probably the best one that came out so far is gonna be the original Pilar in S35, Blade HQ, ex exclusive on that one. So that's one thing for that. Uh, so this one here is in a, a different steel than most. Uh, this is actually a now 1.4116. And from what I can tell, uh, that's like a 440, to a 440B uh, steel. Um, so I gave it on the chart as far as like a 440C. Uh, so I might be a little bit off on that one as far as where it sits, but for corrosion resistant side, it's gonna be about 24 percentile, uh, hardness about 26th, and uh, edge retention in comparison to all the other super steels out there, about 37th percentile. And then all these numbers are gonna be more in an ideal situation. So uh, things like uh, heat treats uh, could actually affect some of these numbers. Uh, but that's where you're going to kind of reference that to the chart there. Uh, so, I mean, to get an idea, I mean, this is a huge knife uh, as far as you know, the way it sits. Uh, so even with a full-size Griptilian, so this is the uh, full-size, not the mini. And then even the Code 4, uh, which I love. Uh, if you don't have a Code 4, I would recommend it. Uh, but Code 4 is going to be uh, that knife there. So it's even uh, bigger than a Code 4. Uh, so that's one thing that's there. And one thing that's great about the cord four is just how thin it is. And then this one is a fairly thick knife there as far as the uh, deadbolt. So there's the Flavio, Flavio Icoma uh, deadbolt. Uh, that's this knife here. And then uh, for the weight on it, uh, it's going to be a pretty heavy knife. Uh, so about 6.4 ounces. Uh, so 6.4 ounces to give you an idea. That's basically taking the full size Griptoian and then also carrying the Rat 2 together. And then that's how much that knife weighs. So it's a little bit less. So this is like 6.6, .6, that's 6.4 ounces. Uh, but to give you an idea as far as the actual weight on that knife. Uh, so looking at also for hand sizing. So we'll start off with adult women's hand. That's gonna be in the upward position. So as you can put your hand over it, to get an idea as far as how that's gonna sit for you for adult women. And then also for adult male's hand, we're going to that chart as well. Uh, so current price on this one uh, is uh, $119.99. Uh, Blade HQ, um, as of recording this video, is running a special on it for $89.99. And you also do get a knife maintenance kit with that. So that's probably the best price you're going to get so far. Uh, MSRP on it is $150 uh, for this one here. Uh, so if you like the format so far and you like what you see uh, in some of the other videos, uh, consider subscribing to the channel and let me know as far as if I'm going in the right direction, uh, if you like how it kind of turns out as far as the information. Uh, so we're going to go on to the uh, action side of it. Uh, so for the Lyman pull gauge is what I use for this uh, as far as gauging the pull. So this is something that we actually can uh, give you a measurement instead of telling you as far as uh, a heavy pull or a light pull. Uh, I can just show you what it is. Uh, so that's what I use this for. Uh, so I'll zero that out. Then we'll do the pull on it uh, with that flipper tab. And then this one uh, before was running about five, so nearly five pounds, uh, 4.15, uh, four pounds of 1.5 or 15.8 ounces. So that's nearly five pounds of pull. Uh, normally about two to three is pretty decent uh, for it. Uh, so this one has, actually has something a little bit different too. Uh, so a lot of the button locks, uh, which this is similar to, uh, like kind of this one here, also a CRKT knife. Uh, the button locks actually have the detent that is actually um, done by the button lock itself or that plunge lock. Uh, so basically in the closed position, uh, there's an actual recess on the blade that the button lock drops into, which is a little bit more shallow. And then, so this detent here is actually uh, done by that button. And then other than this one, uh, which is a difference on it, uh, so also kind of a downfall, you don't get the, the fall shut action because as you see here, uh, so I have it depressed all the way and then it, it basically doesn't really close all the way. 
or as smooth as you would as a button lock. Because a button lock, you disengage it, and then basically all it has is the pivot uh, that's actually um, the resistance for it. You don't actually have the lock being any resistance, uh, where this one you do. Uh, so why is that, that you might ask? Because they actually set a uh, closed detent, and how they did that was is with a actual liner lock. Uh, so there actually is a small liner uh, on, I think, this side of it. So I'll show a picture as far as what that looks like uh, in the picture itself. Uh, so it actually has a little bar here that actually drops into a detent hole on the blade. So that is actually rubbing against the blade uh, all the way through the action. So all the way open, all the way closed. Uh, that little detent ball is doing that. Uh, and also uh, for uh, the actual deadbolt, the deadbolt is also uh, basically running on uh, the uh, knife itself too because as you see it actually stays in the uh, depressed position and it only will pop up when you actually have it fully opened and also if you want to check out as far as what it looks like uh, more in depth uh, JT's knife life uh, he actually disassembled the whole knife as well so you can actually see how it looks like on the inside other than the animation uh, blow apart that CRKT had you can actually look at uh, what he found with it and how the action worked. Uh, but that's something that I think is actually a really decent idea uh, as far as setting that uh, closed detent. Because a lot of times for button locks, uh, they actually have a fairly low detent uh, for it. Uh, so you'd either have to have a high flipper tab or a larger flipper tab to make it work properly. Uh, and then that's where uh, you, can, you can actually raise that detent level a little bit more uh, with that actual liner type of setup that they have on this knife. So that's one thing that's a little bit different for that. So this one, it doesn't really have uh, too many opening methods. So you do have the thumb studs uh, that are available for it. And then you also do have uh, the actual uh, flipper tab. And so no, no push button for it. So just light switch on it. And then you do have uh, just the uh, different methods of opening it. So not really the other way. So that's going to be how that one looks now for that. Uh, so blade length is about 3.9 inches, uh, drop point, and also with a flat grind. Uh, and really a fairly big uh, behind the edge. And so the behind the edge thickness on this one is about uh, eight and a half sheets of paper. Uh, so that's going to be quite a bit thicker uh, than most blades out there. Uh, so where that makes a difference is when you're going through things like cardboard, you're going to have a little bit more resistance to it. Uh, so if you're cutting paper, no difference. It just relates to the edge itself as far as that apex. Uh, but uh, anything else that you're cutting, you're going to have a little bit more resistance for this. And then also uh, for the release side, uh, there's just about a 5% uh, release. So from when you depress it to when it's actually on the blade is just 5%. Uh, so now that's where I was saying for some of the other ones. Uh, so like the liner locks and everything else, it's like maybe about 20% uh, is good, 30% is okay. And then anything over that. Uh, probably should be a little bit less uh, to make it uh, kind of an enjoyable fidget toy uh, for that or fidget knife. So sharpness side for this one uh, came out to be about 340, uh, which is kind of not the best when it comes from a factory. Uh, so it's still new high-end cutlery as far as that sharpness. And then um, it's just, it is kind of getting almost to the point where it needs to be um, kind of worked on uh, for it. So this one, as far as carry also, uh, is going to be right hand uh, tip up and right hand or left hand tip up as well. Uh, in and out of the pocket is not bad. It is a pretty long knife, pretty thick. Uh, so in and out of the pocket also, if you share it with anything like a wallet or anything, then it might be uh, something that you're going to kind of uh, have some interference with that. Uh, but it's a good proof of concept for it. So kind of where I'm going with that is now as far as a, as far as a buy bar or avoid, uh, for this one, I would state to avoid it. It's not one that I think many people are going to really, uh, really like. It's going to be kind of like, oh, that's a pretty cool locking mechanism if you show it to somebody. Uh, but I don't think it's going to have a big rush on it. And then that kind of goes into play as far as even where it's selling at right now. Uh, so with it starting at MSRP of 150 and then they brought it down to 111 or $119.99 as far as the actual sale price on it. And then now they're having a sale on it for $89.99. Uh, if it, I think if it were just blowing off the shelf, um, there wouldn't be a Memorial Day type of sale for it. There wouldn't be those type of things. So $89.99 uh, for the knife. 
So I think that might be saying that it's not selling as well, uh, but that might be up to the folks that really love it. There's going to be some people that absolutely love this blade and it's going to be the one that they really enjoy. Uh, but I think it's just a really good proof of concept and then they should really shrink it down uh, quite a bit to make it actually a usable uh, knife for most people. So check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And thank you again for your time.